I think it's that time to move on to our next segment, which is five takeaways movie remakes. I had a fun one with this. I did too. I forgot about a bunch. When you started saying some of yours, I was like, motherfucker, I forgot that was a remake. I know. You, some of <laughs> yours too. Actually, one of yours inspired one of mine. Oh. So, and it's not the one you think. Interesting. Uh, so let's get started with our number fives, shall we? Oh, that's yes, sir. one. I want to start there. Don't want to start there. <laughs> the one that got inspired by Mr. Paul at number five, and his, of course, Paul's is Let Me In, mm -hmm. the remake from Let the Right One In. Yes. And mine is The Mummy with Brendan Fraser from 1999, which is a remake from the Boris Karloff uh, Mummy. So. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, these are, I love this. And you were the one that inspired because I forgot about The Mummy as a remake. Yeah. And, <laughs> And, and even that has a remake, but that wouldn't go on my list. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Brendan Fraser mummy is top, top notch. Top. That's your number six? Uh, yeah. Coincidentally enough. So tell me, why is Let, Let Me In such a great ad adaptation of the original? Um, I like that this one's take was less of a horror and almost more of a love story to me. Um, so as a horror fan, it had horror elements, which of course I love as a huge mm -hmm. horror fan, but I thought they did a good job just almost making it seem like a friendship that's turning into kind of a love type thing. And I just thought it was beautifully done. Um, I kind of liked a different take of the original that was mainly just kind of a girl that almost I, obsessed is a strong word, but um, mm -hmm. enamored with the boy and just kind of kills off anyone that bothers him. And it was just kind of more of a straight horror to me. Yeah. Than this one was i get that they did add that element to it and i like that uh for me why i chose the mummy and why you reminded me of it i went with a theme with mine it was mm. uh remakes that i feel improved upon significant i love boris karloff uh and i respect the mummy and the creation of it and the design and everything but i don't love the story it's kind of boring in my opinion okay. this is the best mummy movie by far right and it's it, for re like they blew it out of the water with this one this set a precedent in my opinion of how mummy movie should be i think tom cruise and his action mummy movie uh was on the right track with doing action mm -hmm. but just executed insanely poorly yeah you know, so like right. You know, you got to do something like this. I really appreciated it. Um, yeah, no, that's why it's my number five. So, uh, good deal. Let's, let's, let's see what number four is. So, uh, you great choice, by the way. Great choice. Thank that would have been on my list. But I don't, to me, Ocean's Eleven didn't significantly improve upon the original. Ooh. It's just a great adaptation of the original. It's, I mean, mm -hmm. it's better. It surpasses, mm -hmm. but it does. I don't think it improved upon. I just think they took like a smaller story that was good mm -hmm. and then just made it something even better. And I, I'd argue, I like all three of those movies. The first one's far superior, but I like all three of them. But uh, yeah. why did you choose Ocean's Eleven? So I feel, even though I absolutely love the Rat Pack and I love Sinatra to pieces, uh, I thought. I, I really love this one. I thought the cast was tighter. I love the relationship between um, George Clooney and Brad Pitt. I just think it's their duo that I think is very underrated and not talked about enough in movies because you put those two together, there's nothing. I In my mind, there's nothing they can't do. Um, as far as a heist or anything like that, um, I guess it's just because I, I grew up with this one. I probably, as opposed to the original Ocean's Eleven, so this one just kind of has a special place. You know, I remember watching this on our old corduroy couch on the you know in the basement of my house with my parents that i grew up in um nice. you know I, re I remember the burnt popcorn anyway so like it just has a special spot more than the oceans 11 of the rat pack and i didn't know the secret life of walter mitty was a remake yes it was there's a i think it was in the 30s um it's just it's not really the same thing the guy is just sort of an, a dreamer okay you know uh and it's based on a book too so um this one for me in secret life of walter mitty by ben stiller uh which came out i think in 2011 uh, it was either 2010 or 2011, uh, I believe. But it was just a truly fantastic film from beginning to end. Like uh, imagery of every yeah, visual in it is just impactful. The music hits in every note properly with every cut. Uh, he made such a brilliant film that didn't do well. And it bugs me because it is truly like if, if you have not seen this movie, mm -hmm. go watch it. It is so wonderfully done and beautiful little story, too. Um yeah, that's why it's it's one of my top remakes of all time. Like it it's far surpasses all the original. Uh, I think I think that movie would do well now because I think the problem was then is I just don't remember exactly what was going on in the world then. But that 
movie is super inspiring to me. And I feel like yeah. that was a time where we weren't necessarily looking for inspiration. So I feel like right now with the climate of everything, I think if that came out right now, it'd be top box office across the board because everyone's looking for feeling better and being inspired to, to follow your dreams. And I'll tell you, Gen Z, if anybody, and if any Gen Zers are watching this, I'm saying it, watch The Secret Life of Walter Mitty, the Ben Stiller version. I think they'll really like it. Um, oh, yes. You know, I think younger you get, you're right. Like, I have the argument with people all the time where they're like, oh, Gen Z doesn't care about anything. It's like, no, I think they care about themselves more than they care about what you want them to care about. Right. You know, so, like, that's been my big argument uh, with a lot of it. So, like, with this movie, it even takes an older person doing right. the same thing and aspiring right. to it. So, uh, yeah, it is just a great movie. But, uh, all right, let's go on to number three. You have a great pick with The Ring, and I chose Heat. I didn't know Heat was a remake. This is crazy. Heat is a remake. <laughs> of a, it was a TV movie written by Michael Mann, who also mm -hmm. wrote Heat and uh, directed it, called L.A. Takedown. And it was the it was same premise, and he loved the story, and he wanted to rewrite it. You know, I think originally L.A. Takedown was written as an episode of Miami Vice. Okay, and then he liked the story, so he expanded it, and then he got the chance to make it into a, a, a TV show, and they did not do it justice. It wasn't bad. It, I mean, it's not good, but it's not, it wasn't bad. It's a TV mm -hmm. movie, but uh, he he got a chance to do it again, and I just think like. He knocked it out of the water with that one. I just think it's one of the pinnacle heist movies of all time. Yes. And Val Kilmer with that gun, that reloading, just oh. fuck, man. So it's so <laughs> Why'd you pick the ring? Um, so the ring. So the original, I I do love the original. Um, I'm not trying to take away from you know the Japanese for making it. And it was it was good. This movie, for whatever reason, has a hold of me because I'm not gonna sit there and be like, you know, oh, I want to get scared. What's a good horror movie? I, you know, I won't say the ring is even the top 20 for ones to make me feel scared, mm -hmm. but I will watch this movie at least once a week. Like, honestly, like either to, to fall asleep to it because it's a comfort movie or I want to be interested in it and I watch it. Um, I, I think person, Paul. I know <laughs> I think one, <laughs> one of the, the big things for this movie um, is I always think of my friends because my friends knew I loved horror movies since, you know, early high school and freshman year. Parents go out of town for the weekend. They knew I was kind of obsessed with this movie then. So they decided to freak me out. So on VHS, they recorded off the DVD port, just the part of the ring. And so they knew I'd pass out about 3 a.m. from just passing out. Um, so they put it on all just the TVs in my out. house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they put it on all the TVs, and then they cut off all the lights to the entire house and just hit play on all of them. So I wake up to every TV in our house just playing the ring part of the ring. And... Uh, <sighs> They got me good because, you know, I was waking up not completely in the right state of mind and I was freaking out. I was running through that house. I was a mess. And uh, oh, it was worth it. <laughs> I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, that wouldn't happen. I'll fight her. <laughs> I'll fight her. I'm like, fine, let's do it. I can't run. So crawl your ass out. Move your happy <laughs> ass over here with your tracking and all that weird stuff. And I'm going <laughs> to knock you down. <laughs> I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm gonna knock you down. <laughs> <laughs> no monsters getting me. Uh, <laughs> what's our number two? Our number two. Yeah, I knew you were gonna hate mine, but uh, hmm. it. I like it. It's a good mm -hmm. choice. That was a good one. Uh, I like the first one more than the second one, but not bad altogether. <clears throat> Why is it your choice for number two? Um, I love. You know, if I had to pick apart this one and the you know Tim Curry one, um, I just love visually how they did this one. They just made it darker. Um, you know, and it was nice that they were able to bring more more blood and gush to it. You know, the opening scene with Georgie and his arm getting ripped off. I didn't see that coming. So I was oh like, God. holy shit, this is what we're in for. Um, I really love Skarsgård. I, I love his depiction of Pennywise, you know, as opposed to Tim Curry's was more friendly, goofy, but still, you know, a, a killer alien creature. Um, I thought this is one that if I were to be scared of one, I'd be more scared of this than Tim Curry. I just wanted to chill with Tim Curry. Almost like looking, the Devil's Rejects. Are you looking forward to the show that they're going to do? The um, um, I If it's done correctly, yes. I feel like a lot of times the TV shows that are kind of straight horror, they drop the ball. Because uh, what was it? I watched Nosferatu and I tried a few other you know horror tv shows and a lot of times they just they don't hold up you know they get you in the pilot like they're supposed to and then second episode you're like 
well, this is supposed to be a fill in, but then by you know four or five, you're like, okay, they just didn't know how to hold it. Like, this is why horror almost is better as a movie than a, a show. And I think when American Horror Story first started, they did a good job with their first couple seasons, but even them, I'd say seasons four on, they've just consistently dropped the ball and just kind of made it to where yeah. I don't even give a shit. And I used to love, I used to have a group of like 15 friends, we'd watch those episodes every night, and then now, you know. I might watch it if I have nothing else. I'm like, oh, the new season just dropped. I guess I'll put it on. So I don't know. How, I gave up after Hotel. Um, okay. Because even from, like, you're right, from four on, it was just terrible. And, and what bugged me the most was none of it was good all the way through. No. Uh, even the first season, the second season, uh, it's like, it, I don't know what it is, but it's like he gets halfway through a season and drops the fucking ball. Yeah. It's like, you're doing it beautifully, doing it beautifully, and then it's just like, extend it six more episodes and fuck you guys. Like, yeah. I don't know. It's weird. And I don't like it. And like, mm -hmm. the even in, in the one with the clowns, which was later, where everybody was dressed like the clowns and it was the suburban mm -hmm. street and such, that kicked off. Like, that was like, this is going to be one of the best seasons yet. And then it turned around and I was just like, what happened? Mm -hmm. I was like, what happened here? Like, this is insanity. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's like you had a you had like one of the best seasons yet and you turned around and you like just took a steaming pile on it it was crazy but uh they, yeah, had, the, but, with it, so. they had the perfect setup too because they're making it a political season at the height of our you know trump and everything else going on so it's like you had everyone's attention because this is like half real half fictional and everybody like they could have made that I mean, like that that could have been a show well, everyone talks about for years to come well, that was the thing. He did a good job. So, and I'm sorry for anybody who's watching this as a clip, but you're you're getting our, our TED talk <laughs> on this. Uh, he did a good job because, like, even setting up how he was able to take power in like a cultish mm -hmm. way and build it yeah. up, and slowly but surely, and like how the rhetoric became and all this falsehoods and such. I was like, you should have just done a show like that and lead him to becoming president, right? You know, or something like that. Not have a really cool story that turned super political all of a sudden you're like i'm like man you took me down a journey and then you screwed me man i, I really i was not happy about that but anyway whatever i was tired of it uh <laughs> anyway i chose roadhouse i think this roadhouse i love the original roadhouse but i love the original roadhouse for all the reasons that this movie improved upon it uh it's so campy and cheesy and crazy this movie has some camp to it but it is taken seriously. It handles mental health mm -hmm. uh, seriously. The fighting is done seriously. Um, the story's not bad. I mean, it's a I, I don't understand how people get shitty about the story and then love the original. It's like same shit. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like but with a in, with a better ending, in my opinion, with a mm -hmm. better ending yeah. and a better message in it. Like whereas the original, this movie is like in terms of parallels is like unforgiven okay for good reason it's just you know so if anybody who hasn't watched unforgiven the clint eastwood movie it's great 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 western that the entire movie for two hours tells you that superhero cowboys that we see in movies do not exist they right. don't exist and they keep demolishing all of the big wigs back in the day throughout that entire movie until clint eastwood's character william money shows them that he was a he was a superhero cowboy he was one of those ones we saw and he takes them all out and it's done really well and i know i'm not getting, doing it justice you should go check it out but that's what this re reminds me of was the fact that heroes don't and, and especially in today's world those were that was a, a society of people who were like everyone who was involved got their comeuppance mm -hmm. uh all the bad people died but the one who was just as bad as they were but he was fighting on the side of good wasn't allowed to stay we cannot tolerate your hero here, your type of hero here. It just doesn't work anymore. So that was the message. I love that aspect of it. So it improved upon the original, which was all those cowboys are superheroes. <laughs> right. So it is. <laughs> and now they improved upon it and said, you know, uh, like an actually worthwhile message in my opinion. So that's why it's my number two. Now, number choice. one. Great choice, by the way. I, I cannot that. go with just one of these. Because That's fair. Hey, I understand. Both of them are the movie from David Lynch's movie. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, are far superior versions of the movie. <laughs> like, not even the same galaxy, man. Like, yeah. Oh <laughs> That's why I, I forgot it was a remake. When you said Dune, I was like, I completely forgot about Lynch's. 
Like I, this is Dune. Yep. When I think of Dune, anyway, I'll let you talk about Dune first. It's the so. one you think about. You're right because it is the, the spirit one. And here's the <laughs> thing, David. Everybody gets all mad and uppity about it, and like, oh, and especially I know people are going to be like, oh, David Lynch. You know, he's he's retired now with everything going on. How could you say this? I fucking love David Lynch. David Lynch in his interviews and everything else as a person, I have learned a lot from his movies and his composition of shots and just his writing. So don't talk to me. I, I've studied David Lynch. I have a high respect for David Lynch. I've watched all of his weird ass movies that make no goddamn sense, but are still enjoyable for some reason. I don't understand it, but I do. <laughs> but the one I do not like is the same one he can't stand. And I hate when fans get all shitty with me about it. And it's just like, mm -hmm. it's Dune. He didn't even like Dune. Right. So yeah, this is a far superior version to that. Um, I can credit a lot of things that he did on that movie Dune that I appreciated, but this was a phenomenal remake and it's the pinnacle of sci-fi. I think this is the number one sci-fi movie ever these two movies together as one now yeah. i'm so glad you picked number one as a sci-fi movie which is my favorite horror movie of all time but didn't go on my <laughs> list because it i don't feel it's it far surpasses the original but sir Ooh. i think well it far surpasses the original by <laughs> writing uh visual effects all that stuff but mm. i'm saying in terms of story i don't think it dominates i think the original story is oh no you know yeah. so mm. that that's more in terms of what i mean um like i like movies that remake old ones that were just not that good but the thing tell me about it. i know it's your favorite talk about it god show. bless it man john carpenter i mean everything about this movie is is amazing to me i love the visuals i love how if we actually knew what norwegian we could have known he was yelling about the dog at the very beginning um mm -hmm. things you know we we didn't even know like i didn't know until i became a, a bigger fan looked into it then i was like that's crazy that the answer was there at the beginning and you know he doesn't get credit as much as i think he should for this one out of all his films and he's had great films um cast cast is perfect, perfect. i couldn't i couldn't imagine this being any other cast um everything about this this movie is terrifying i mean you start with the isolation that's a terrifying situation by itself you're snowed in you're with the same people you know, I get people are like, oh, it can't be that bad. Like, I don't know. Have you ever been stuck with your family just at the fucking airport for 10 hours? Oh, it got it sucked and you got annoyed. Imagine being somewhere where it's just y'all. Right. Like, fuck, man. I couldn't imagine that. I can fathom that just like with The Shining. And uh, this movie is great. I, I the practical effects are just so beautifully done. You could tell he cared. The whole cast cared. Everyone yeah. top to bottom, you could tell gave a shit and gave their all. You know, the audio is great. The visuals are good. The editing was great. The score. I mean, if it was louder on my phone, that would be my ringtone for the rest of my life. The doom, doom. But it's, it's too quiet. Room. So I can't hear it at the time. Um, but uh, yeah. Did I, did I ever tell you those stories, what we would do back in the day when we worked at the video store? Uh -uh. So we were, we always volunteer because Lenny, uh, my, you know, one of my best friends, Lenny, he lived like a couple of blocks away from, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, um, the place we worked, Hollywood video. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, why can't I think of the name of it? Uh, yeah. So he worked only a few blocks away. So when there was a snowstorm coming, I'd crash at his house. It was like high school. Um, oh, yeah. I'd crash at his house. And so like we would hang out in the store, close up while it started snowing and then walk home. And let me tell you, we would get the road flares out from the trunk, and then it was doom, doom. And then, like, we're just walking through the <laughs> blizzardy yeah. really snowstorm with our road flares. Oh, man, it was so much fun. That's awesome. Yeah. Hell yeah. Every time there's a snowstorm, we would pull him out and just walk around. <laughs> He's gone, McCready. He's gone. <laughs> then, I told you earlier, if you're watching the podcast or listening, dork. That's what I was. Uh, but thank you for sharing your list, man. That was a fun list. So that was our top five movie remakes. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Share with us what you think in the comments. I want to hear what you guys say for remakes. That'd be great. Uh -huh. So before we get started, though, I do want to say thank you to our sponsor of this episode, StubHub. We truly appreciate you. I just went to an AJR concert, got my tickets on StubHub. Never had a problem with them. Do enjoy everything I go to. So if you want to get up off your butts this summer, go out and enjoy some fun venues, maybe a comedy show maybe a concert, maybe a play. I don't know. Go out and check it out. Get your tickets on StubHub. They are awesome. Link down below. We appreciate you. All right, guys. So we're going to get started. Bye.